In this video, let's talk about why do we need to start a new thread. And one of the first reasons is to solve divide and conquer type of problems. So we have demonstrated how to start a thread, the basic syntax of that. But the task that we want this thread to complete is just to write the thread name or the thread ID for 100 times. That's a silly task. So let's look at some more realistic type of problems that can be solved by use multiple thread. And one of that is called divide and conquer. So what that means is that you have a huge task. So again, let's use this rectangle to represent a task. And I intentionally made the rectangle bigger because I wanted to represent a big fat task. When we look carefully about this task, it appears that we can actually divide this task into different chunks or different sections so that we can let multiple people working on this task. If we are talking about a real life task, if we divide this task into, let's say we divide it into two different tasks, then we can find two different people to work on that in parallel. So we can have person one working on the left chunk and person two working on the right one. In real life, we have many type of scenarios like this, for example, cooking. Let's say we're cooking four different dishes for dinner. Mom cook on two and dad cook on the other two. That way, instead of taking one hour, maybe it's only taking half an hour to finish the cooking process. And then we have the dinner ready. So this type of problem is called divide and conquer. And let's jump into Visual Studio and see whether we can uh, create a scenario where we can simulate this type of problems. So let's close this application that we created previously and create a new project. Still console application and let's call this divide and conquer and click on the create button. Now, what we are trying to do is that we're going to have a array of integers. So let's say that we have 10 integers. Well, it's more realistic to have thousand or a million, but let's just, for example, we have 10 integers and we want to summarize them. It's a very simple task. You can just use for loop to complete it. So if we were to use single thread to complete the job it becomes very, very straightforward. Uh, so we can have a sum and we initialize it to zero and then we're going to do a for each loop. So we're going to say var number in array. And then as we're looping through the array, we're going to add this to, uh, to the summary. And then at the end, we are going to output it and we're going to say the sum is sum. So this is going to give us the result pretty quickly because the array is only 10 elements long. All right, so it says the sum is 55. Now, how do we know how long this takes? So let's get a timestamp. Start time equals daytime now. And then at the end, we're going to get the end time equals daytime now. And here we're going to add another one. We're going to say right line. And we're going to say the time takes is we're going to get a time span. So I'm going to say time span equals end time minus start time. And then over here, we're going to say time span dot total milliseconds. We can use total milliseconds. Uh, if that's not accurate enough, we can use nanoseconds. So let's try milliseconds for now. And at the end, add this red line so uh, the program doesn't exit. Before we actually test it, Let's add a thread.sleep here. So thread.sleep, I want it to sleep for maybe a hundred milliseconds per each iteration. So this is to simulate a longer calculation right? because we only have 10 elements in the array. It's not long enough for simulating a CPU intensive calculation scenario. That's why I'm using the thread.sleep to simulate that. If we do it this way and then we give it a try, we'll see how long it's going to take to summarize this. So let's give it a try. All right. So the result is 55 and the time it takes is about slightly higher than a thousand milliseconds, which is uh, one second. But if we look carefully about this problem that we are resolving, 
this is very similar to the kitchen problem. Right? So we're cooking dishes and can be actually split it for multiple cooks. Here we're calculating multiple elements in the array, but we don't have to just use one thread. We can use two threads, three threads. For example, if we're using two threads, the first thread calculates the first five and the second thread calculates the second five. And then at the end, we can add the result together to get the total summary. So that way we're going to shorten the calculation time for sure. So let's give it a try. We can delete this for each and then we can use threads, multiple threads to solve the problem. Let's say we're going to use four different threads. Okay. So we're going to have four different summaries, three and summary four. Okay. We're going to divide this task into four different chunks. And then we're going to work on that separately. So, um, over here, we're going to say number of threads and I'm just say four and then the segment length, we, we need to calculate that. Right? So I'm going to say array dot length divided by number of threads. And now we're going to have a array of threads because we have four different threads. So here, because I have this number of threads, so I'm going to use the number of threads. So number of threads, this creates four different threads, and then I'm going to assign a task to each thread. Okay. So thread number one, which is thread zero, this one equals to new thread. And what it's going to do is to summarize this, summarize the section. So before we proceed, we need to create a task for the thread to do. So each one of these four different threads work on the same thing. Basically, they just summarize the section that they are assigned. So I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call it sum segment, and it has a start index and a end index. And this one has a segment sum initialize it to zero and then we're going to loop from the start to the end and here we're going to say segment sum equals array well this has to be defined first so we're going to move this to the top then here we say array i so this help us to calculate the sum of the segment and once it is done i'm going to return this the segment sum now that I have the task, I can assign the task to my thread. So the first thread, which is thread zero, I'm going to say new thread, and then I'm going to use a lambda expression and I'm going to say sum one equals some segment. And that's from zero to segment length. So here is not thread, but threads. And we're going to do similar thing for the other four different threads so here for the first one. I mean, the second one, sum number two equals from segment length to two segment length. And now sum number three for thread number three is from segment length times two, three times segment length. Well, probably it would look better if I just put this at the beginning. And then last one is going to be for threat. Uh, this is number two and this is three, but some number four, and this is going to be starting from three times segment length to array length. Okay. So we divided the array into four different chunks. But if we change this number, it will be able to divide it accordingly. Now we are going to start all of the threads. And for that, we're going to loop through the threads array. And we are going to say thread dot start that starts all of the threads. Now, remember, this is threading, right? Multiple threading. When we use thread, it starts asynchronously, which means that it's not blocking. And that means that this is going to run through pretty quickly and you're going to have the end time very, very close to the start time. If we do it this way, 
to get the actual time, we will need to wait over here. We need to intentionally block. To do that, we're gonna do for each again, and then we're gonna say strat dot join. So when we say thread dot join, you can see that blocks the calling thread until the thread represented by this instance terminates. But because we're going through all of the thread, so that means that this line will not run until all of the four different threads finishes. And then at the end, we're gonna say the sum is sum one plus sum two plus sum three. What is the problem here? Uh, it says use unassigned, so here, uh, I just need to assign zero to each one of it. <laughs> Before I actually try it, don't forget to add a thread sleep here. So thread dot sleep for 100 milliseconds. So this is the same as a single thread scenario. And now let's try it again to see how long it takes this time. Okay, so it takes 400 milliseconds. This is way shorter than 1000 milliseconds, which is a single thread scenario. In this case, it's not really a good example to use because we have only 10 elements in the array. Uh, spinning up four different threads just for 10 elements is a waste of time. But for demonstration purpose, I added a 100 milliseconds delay in each iteration to simulate a long running CPU intensive calculation. So you can see the difference. But in real life scenarios, you might have thousands of elements in an array and spinning up multiple threads like this is going to definitely cut down the calculation time. So with this example, you notice that with the divide and conquer type of problems using multiple threads, it's very good for improving the performance. And that is the second reason for using multiple threading programming. That's everything I want to cover in this video. If any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.